Welcome guys back on my YouTube channel. Today I'm so excited because I completed this really awesome bike build. You know, I like to be like an artist and paint all my bikes and all my builds. I was lucky I had Vincenzo who came here a couple months ago. He brought me his bike and he told me, Manuel, what do you think? I want you to make a bike that has to be really cool and unique for the Del Swan Rally of Sardinia. That's what we did. Let me know in the comments if you like this bike and this livery inspired by the 1989 Super Tenere. But with no further ado, let me get into the bike build, into the specifications, because I've done so much that this will be a pretty long video. Let's start with the design. First of all, this was a Yamaha Tenere Rally Edition. It came with the blue plastics. It already came with the Akrapovich exhaust, with the different grille, and with this bash plate, which is from the Yamaha accessory package. But it was blue, and I wanted to do the bike inspired to the 1989 Super Tenere 750, which meant first thing I had to do, I had to order different plastics. I ordered the front white, and the rear black. In this way, I already changed the design of the bike. It had no graphics on. And then we went with this. I worked in the last months designing a sort of windshield cover, even though this is actually a windshield and one unique piece. What we did, we kept the OEM headlight, but we replaced the transparent upper windshield and the side panels all in one. We made this in fiberglass and painted it in white, but this is also available in black, which if you're interested in this cover, you don't need a full tower setup. You can check it out in the description and you can order it for any standard Tenere. Once we had this unique piece and we had made the mold, we had to understand how to give a different look to the bike a more aggressive look. For this reason, we started testing different solutions with different holes on the fairing. Finally, after many tests, we came out with this design, which to me it reminds a bit the helmet of the ancient Romans. I really like this design. One important thing was not to cover light, not to have any loss in the visibility at night. For this reason, we had to do many tests. And with this design, you'll have no problem at all and you'll have the same visibility you had just with the OEM headlight. This, to me, is a game changer because it makes the bike feel and look like a completely different bike. Moving behind the new windshield cover, a lot is going on in this area. First thing we did, we moved the OEM dashboard from the nav tower to the handlebar this was possible thanks to a new, very light and affordable kit from Rebel Exports that lets you move the dashboard on the handlebar. This means we have much more space to put other devices like GPS, tablets, uh, multiple devices. And you'll see this in the Motorbike Expo Yamaha Tenere build I did for them, always for the Dell Swan Rally, where we put a Garmin GPS and a smartphone. This said, for this build, we went for a full nav tower. The reason for this is because we wanted to provide a very solid solution to sustain the tablet. This is the Carpe Eater tablet, where we can not only use it as a GPS, or to watch Netflix if we are bored on the highway, but also you can put a road book, meaning that if we are an adventure rider and we don't plan on taking part in rally racing, but would like to try the feeling of navigating with the road book, thanks to the Carpe Eater, you can do this, have the road book, and also this can act as a trip master. So we have all in one screen, a full digital road book setup. Furthermore, to command the tablet, you don't need to use your hands or anything, and you don't need any wires, because we have the USB thumb switch. This is super useful, especially for adventure riding, because you'll be able to navigate on the map, zoom in, zoom out, without ever taking your hands off the handlebar. This means 
much more safety. Speaking about the brand new Rebel Exports full rally nav tower, we have some incredible features because this is a modular system. If one day we want to remove the tablet and we want to put an actual roadbook to participate in a world championship rally, we can do this without having to remove or change the full tower, just the upper bracket. Furthermore, you have here a four-way fuse box. This is what professional riders use in rallies where you have to only wire one power input and then you have all the four power outlets. It's dust proof, splash proof, because it has this cover and it's been used also at Dakar, a very reliable solution and lets you wire up to four devices. On the central part of the tower, we have an on off LED switch. In this way, once we turn it on, we will have the LED light turn on and we'll know we are having continuous power to the Carpe Eater tablet, but also to the two USB ports that we placed on the hex bar in order that if Vincenzo needs to charge his phone or charge the tablet, even though the tablet has pins underneath so it gets the charge already all the time when you're riding, thanks to the two USB ports, you'll manage to have the bike turned off, but still charge his device. One very important feature of this nav tower is that it has two hex bars going all the way from one side to the other of the bike, which means we have a big increase in the rigidity of the whole system and we won't have to worry about devices vibrating too much. And if you crash, you'll have a much better protection. Moving to the handlebar, there's many changes here. We kept the OEM handlebar, but we changed grips we put motocross grips with the soft compound by Ariete because in Sardinia there are chances that there will be mud and you want to have a really good grip but at the same time being a rally with many kilometers we need the grips to be soft we also added pro taper internal rings in this way when he's getting tired or he's tense he won't get like me blisters on his hands. The hand guards are different. These are the Acherbis hand guards, the rally hand guards used also by the factory teams at the Dakar rally. Then with this vintage Acherbis logo, they blend in with the full vintage graphic. The upper plate is white. This is not available from Acherbis. We have it available in white, orange, red, and also blue, but it's a private production we had made. The two levers are completely completely different. We went for a pro taper full clutch with bracket system. This is very cool because you have the quick adjuster in gold. You can quickly adjust the clutch and on the other side we have the anti-brake lever always by pro taper that it can be adjusted quickly with no tools in seven different positions. You can put the front brake lever in the preferred position where you have the best feeling so that you get a great sensibility on the front brake. The front brake pump is different. We went for the YZ brake pump and we added a CNC machined cap anodized in blue with the YZ logo. Something completely different and it's in a way an experiment. We didn't want like always the front brake hose go here in the middle and work up here because sometimes it can be annoying. You have to fix it with zip ties and this is what I did on my Tenere. If you haven't watched the video you go and see my Tenere I built uh, to race the Sardinia Legend Rally. It didn't give me any problems to have the hose here, but I thought, what if I can solve this small issue? And we kept the OEM routing, because on this bike, we completely removed the ABS system. We reduced weight. We have removed over 10 kilograms on this bike. In order to keep this shape of the hose, we had to put the brake caliper on the right-hand side and on the left, we left the sensor so that we still have the OEM odometer work. We can see the speed and everything, all the data is there. But this means here I have a lot of empty space. On this bracket for the tablet, you see there are two brackets with two big holes. These are made because if we want to add some other USB ports, 
or we want to add some other maybe clock or a trim master, we will have here the space to add something. One of the many goals in building this bike, and if not the primary goal, was to improve the rideability of the bike, make it more stable, more precise in the riding, and just give a better feeling to the rider. To do so, we went with the triple clamp bracket underneath the risers. We have the CNC machine bracket that gets us the mounting points for the Scott steering damper. You can adjust the high speeds and the low speeds on this damper. It's used by every rider at the Dakar Rally and in all world championship races. Very high quality and very easy to use. But this was not enough in order to improve the stability of the Tenere 700. I got asked if we should put the 48 millimeter forks on this, uh, Kayaba or Olins, and I told uh, Vincenzo, I believe there is no real need to put 48 millimeter forks unless you're doing professional racing and you're really gonna be riding this bike at 200 kilometers an hour with added weight and all that stuff. I believe the best solution comes from Rally Raid and it's the internal extreme cartridge kit. We changed the internal cartridges, we added Motorex oil, a denser oil, and this really is a huge upgrade. I personally ride my Tenere even on the motocross track. I even close jumps and have no issue and never bottom out. The nice thing about this front internal cartridge is that it's very sensible in the first part, you can really feel it copy, absorb all the small bumps, but at the same time, the bike stays more up. This just makes it feel more precise in the riding, especially entering turns. But when we impact with an unexpected hole or bump or jump, it supports us. It doesn't go to the end of the travel and the handlebar doesn't tend to close, which with the OEM suspensions, you can get sometimes the feeling that when you're trying to ride a bit aggressive, the bike tends to understeer and take you to the floor. Together with the front suspensions, don't do the mistake. Like I see many adventure riders, they change the forks, but don't do anything on the rear suspensions. Remember, when you are working on any bike, motocross to adventure bike, when you intervene on suspensions, you have to do it on both the front and the rear. The reason is because if you only add rigidity on the front, you'll have a bike that is unbalanced and you could even make the feeling on the bike worse than it was with the OEM setup. For this reason, on the rear, we went for a full tractive rear suspensions made and set up by Rally Raid UK. In fact, when we ordered the suspension set up from Rally Raid, the very cool thing is that I was able to contact them and tell them the riding skill of my rider, his weight when all geared up, and they gave me the perfect setup and the perfect spring stiffness in order to match my rider's skills. Looking at the side of the bike, first thing you notice is how nice this full graphic kit came out in matte finish and crystal material. Then we kept the OEM Yamaha Tenere 700 Rally Edition seat, but we changed the seat cover with the one by Selle della Valle with the quick dry leather and with the camels on the back so that we have underneath here a layer of memory foam, increasing the comfort on long liaisons, but also increasing the grip when we move towards the back of the bike. Different from the seat cover that is sold, we did a small customization. We did the carbon part only here in the final part so that it would match the line of the side number plate. And this is a really cool touch, but keep in mind, we do custom seat covers and custom seats only for bike builds. It's not possible to order a custom seat cover like you want. We can only design it 
if you take the bike here and we do a full build. Other than this, we place the uh, Cherbis frame guards. There are different colors on my YouTube channel. I showed you in the past the blue-black color. This time we went for a gray-black color and we changed the foot pegs. We put the Rebel Exports uh, Adventure Rally foot pegs. These are wider and come out more to increase the grip you have when standing up or when riding the bike. Also increases the comfort on long rides. These foot pegs are also used by factory Yamaha riders racing the Tenere like Alessandro Botturi, multiple Africa race winner. A small aesthetic touch we did was to add some grills on the side. I see many people buying protectors here that you can find online. Many manufacturers make protectors like for the throttle body and all that stuff. I'll be sincere, to me that is bullshit. I mean, you don't need a protection here. It's worthless, you're throwing away your money. Here, we didn't do it. I could tell you stories and say this adds protection. It's nonsense. We added this only purely for an aesthetic reason. If you want to believe that it protects and all that stuff, for sure it protects, but if you're getting stuff here in a crash, I think, you know, your bike getting damaged is not what you're worried about, but probably about your legs or something exploding. We have then the Akrapovic exhaust. This I put on my Tenere because my Tenere was standard. This was the rally version. We added crash bars. These are from Touratech. These come in black, but we wanted the bike to look really cool and unique. For this reason, we went and powder coat them in a matte white finish which looks really good to me, together with the turn indicators. Let's be true, the OEM Tenere turn indicators suck. They, they just look like a toy. Uh, the rally version looks much nicer. This means that if you have a standard Tenere, you can still add and order these from any Yamaha dealer. Speaking instead about the wheels, these also are very important, especially the tires. We changed completely the wheels. We went with the CNC machine, the hubs by Han wheels. 30% bigger spokes. These are reinforced spokes. These are rally wheels. These are used even by the Yamaha factory team at the Dakar rally because with the bigger spokes, the wheel is much more stronger. We decided to go with the gold hub because also the pro taper lever have some gold and the external of the hand guards are gold. We wanted, you know, to give attention to every single detail, even the smallest one. Looking at the wheels, on the left-hand side, we have this that is needed for the sensor. We have down the sensor of the dashboard to know our speed, how many kilometers we are doing for the odometer. On the right-hand side, probably this is the first time you see it, we have the brake disc and the brake caliper. On the rally wheels, we mounted the Michelin Desert Tire, both on the front and on the rear. Inside we put Michelin Desert Bib Mousse because on an adventure bike that is much heavier than a normal enduro bike, there is no other option other than going for the Michelin Desert Mousse because these are the most reliable. In my career, I have tested Mousse from many different brands. I was actually a test rider for some companies and I believe this is the most reliable solution, but you have to take the combination. This means both Mousse and tire has to be by Michelin and the desert model. On the front, this design gives a good grip off-road. On the rear, the design of the tire is a bit less aggressive than the front. This means that this tire will last pretty long and it can be used both off-road and even for road sections. Just keep in mind that if there is a lot of mud, you won't have an incredible grip with this tire because it's a desert tire meant to ride in the desert and on dunes and on hard pack. But still for the Sardinia terrain, this I believe is gonna be perfect. Another thing we changed was the rear brake pump. 
even here we went for the YZ uh, brake pump. We added also on the rear the CNC machine cap anodized in blue with the YZ logo. The reason for this is because we want to have a much more responsive brake on the rear. The OEM brake pumps are thought for more uh, road use rather than off-road use. When you're riding off-road, you'll find obstacles at the last second and you need the brakes to be super reactive and removing all the ABS, this provides us the perfect solution. But one thing I have to say, you have to be an experienced rider because as soon as you touch the rear brake, it will be very easy to lock the rear wheel meaning that you need to know what you're doing with the bike and have a good control on it. To install the rear brake pump, a modification was needed. Behind here is a special bracket that we designed, which I won't show you because if not, all the other rally kit companies, as always, will copy our products. And we had to change the hose and we had a custom hose made. Please let me know in the descriptions if you would be interested in having available uh, this brake upgrade kit, which would include the brackets, the brake pumps, uh, the hoses, and also the ABS removal spacers. Because when you remove the ABS systems, you'll need specific spacers in order to tap where the hoses go and bolt on. I'm really curious on your opinion and your ideas on this livery I designed together with the guys from SKDA in Australia. I'm also very interested to know what you think about the windshield cover we designed because it took us really a long amount of time. We tried so many different designs, cutouts. Now I'm very satisfied and proud on how it looks because I believe it makes the bike look much more aggressive. And I don't know, to me, when I look at this bike, it feels really like a Dakar bike from the past, but transformed into a modern bike. I'm almost thinking I want to get one myself to build this way and to ride around. So maybe I could change the one I have and have it full white with this graphic. As I mentioned, this cover can be placed also just on a normal Tenere without a rally tower. The cool feature about this is that we will need only two bolts to hold the whole windshield. Uh, whereas if we use the OEM, we have eight bolts in order to remove the upper windshield and the side panels. Here, we just remove two bolts and it comes out. And it also adds a protection to your headlight. Potentially, you could put as two small grills here and you would have maximum protection for your headlight, which is pretty expensive. The uniqueness of the Rebel X Sports uh, fuse box, and the reason for which many factory riders decide to use this fuse box is that you have only one main power going in and the four power outlets, but the very useful feature is the fact that if a fuse breaks, you'll immediately know because a red LED will turn on, meaning you won't have to worry about checking wires around your, your bike. You'll know what the problem is. Quickly change the fuse and you're ready off to go. Many times I see disastrous work on wiring. I've seen people with GPS, a phone charger or USB ports wire everything all the way to the battery, which is a no-no because that means if you have a problem with one wire, you'll become crazy trying to understand where it is. And if you just want to remove the charger or your GPS mount, you'll have to dismantle half of the bike. For this reason, we used here one of the auxiliary power outlets. And if you want to wire anything, you'll do it here on the nav tower. Meaning if I want to remove this bracket with the pins, I just unbolt, get off the connector and I'm done. Since we are talking about battery power and all that stuff, underneath the seat, there are some other tweaks we did to this bike. We changed the battery and we removed almost 2.5 kilograms, just changing the battery. We went for a get a lithium battery. This is very compact, very small, but with a lot of power, enough to be used on a bike 
like the Yamaha 10R700. But what happens when we change a battery on these type of bikes? Usually the battery uses up a lot of space. The GET battery is super compact and super small. Surely in the boxes with lithium battery, you usually get some foam that you can put in between to make up that space. But we wanted to utilize that extra space we are getting, which made us think and come up with the idea what if we 3D printed and designed some toolboxes where we could put some tools or some, I don't know, small spare parts. And that's what we did. We designed two small 3D printed toolboxes where we can put maybe a rain jacket, a very small rain jacket or something under the seat in order to have some extra space. Last upgrade we did, we added the twin air foam filter. The air filter upgrade is really important in my opinion because when we are at a rally, we want to understand if the filter is dirty or not. In this way, we'll immediately see it. It will be easy to take down clean and put back so that our bike can breathe always fresh air. Just for your info, especially if you are planning on building a bike to go adventure riding around the world and stay a lot away from home. In the toolboxes we designed, we managed to fit 26 uh, condoms. That means you won't feel alone on your next adventure ride. Well, this is it for today. I really hope that you like how I transformed the Tenere 700 Rally Edition into a Super Tenere. Maybe this bike reminds you of the 90s and 80s, because this is inspired to the 1989 Super Tenere. She is ready to start in Deo Swank Rally of Sardinia. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Be sure to subscribe to my Instagram and my YouTube channel. Thanks for your attention. See you in the next one. Ciao.